And so the story goes that two old friends bumped into one another one day on the street. One of them looked very forlorn, sad, almost depressed, on the verge of tears. His friend asked him, what in the world happened to you? The sad fellow said, let me tell you, Three weeks ago, my uncle died and left me $50,000. That's a lot of money. I know, sad the sa said the sad fellow. But two weeks ago, a cousin I never knew died and left me $80,000 free and clear. Sounds like you've been blessed. Yes, but you don't understand. Last week, my great aunt passed away and I inherited a quarter of a million dollars. Now the friend was very confused and so he asked the sad fellow, then why do you look so sad and so glum? And the friend responded, because this week, nothing. <laughs> it's all in the timing. <clears throat> Isn't that the trouble with receiving something on a regular basis, even if it's gift? eventually we come to expect it. It has become the custom of the community that gathers around the shrine of Our Lady of the Snows that for 70 years on this last day of the solemn novena that we gather together in an act of thanksgiving. In our assembly this evening, if asked, all of us would be able to vocalize some gift or some blessing in our lives that we have received from God, especially those blessings that we have received through the intercession of our Blessed Mother, Our Lady of the Snows. Yet I wonder, if asked what you are grateful for, if asked what I am grateful for, I wonder if any one of us here would respond, I am grateful for my problems. Because my friends, isn't it the pains and the hurts and the disappointments and the problems in our lives that launch us into setting new priorities for ourselves? Isn't it the troubles that make and demand that we somehow mature and propel us to be able to grow and to develop? Isn't it the problems that afford us the strength and the stamina, all of that which we didn't think we had or that we could conjure up? Isn't it the pains and the problems of our lives that lead us to new understandings and help us to appreciate our lives even more? The conflicts and the pains and the hurts in life help each one of us to know ourselves better and lead us to the acknowledgement of how much God really loves us and how much Christ identifies with our own pain and anguish. Some time ago, I went to visit this lady who had recently lost her husband. She had been married for 40 years. And she told me at the end of our visit, Father, even in the pain and in the tragedy of my life, I have come to know how many people have loved us, my husband and I. 
people have been so kind and so generous. Family and friends have been here around the clock that have been here for me. And sometimes even people that I don't know have surrounded me with their compassion and with their care. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not suggesting or implying this evening that we should go out and deliberately look for pain and for suffering and for tragedy because it has the potential to make us better. What I am suggesting, though, is that every challenge in life teaches us, teaches us how to better our lives and how to grow in compassion, how to grow in wisdom, how to grow in patience, in love and tenderness, perhaps acquiring a sense of humor and the growth in so many virtues. And if that isn't miraculous, then I don't know what is. While the world and society might not want us to focus in on the negative, and while perhaps even people of faith, people who have come to this novena, would rather that we focus only on miraculous cures, on dramatic miraculous cures. Here ever before us, we have something else. Here before us, we have the message of the cross. We stand, all of us, here on this church tonight in the shadow of the cross. At this altar table here, we gather together to give thanks to God through this Eucharistic feast, this act of thanksgiving, giving thanks once again for the salvation wrought to us by the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and our divine healer. It is through his passion, it is through his sufferings, it is through his death and his glorious resurrection that we have been healed and we have reason to hope. The Eucharist that we have come here to celebrate this evening is the font and the summit of our life and faith. The Eucharist transforms all of us and makes us into better disciples and followers of Jesus. The Eucharist brings to our memory the sufferings of Christ on the cross. How sublime it is that by the means of something so tragic and terrible, his passion and suffering and death on the cross, we find our salvation. And for this, we gather together in profound thanksgiving. May this last evening of our solemn novena be for us and be for our families an occasion for true gratitude for all of God's blessings, for all of the good gifts that we have received, but also for the light that comes forth from the darkness light that comes forth from the pain and the suffering and the failures and the problems that we have in our lives. For these problems and disappointments and hurts can become our truest blessings. And for that too, we give thanks tonight. tonight. Amen. <laughs>